Hello and welcome back to another podcast by the Jules Fancast. Today we are joined by a man who, of course, won the League Two title under Martin Allen. Um, went on, went on and played 104 times for the Jules, scoring 20 goals. Um, he is going to talk about all these stories from pre Jules, during Jules, and after Jules. We are joined by Chris Welkdale. First, say, Chris, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very, very well. Firstly, Chris, um, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. No problem. Um, Chris, uh, yeah, let's start prior to Jules then. You let, um, tell me how you got into how you got into the game. Um, so, I think, actually, tennis, tennis was my first ever sport, actually, when I uh, was growing up. Uh, I, was, I was following my brother I was, um, with whatever he did, and he sort of moved over to football when he was about eight years old. Uh, so I said, oh, OK, I'll, uh, I'll have a go at that as well then. Um, and I think when I was, uh, how old was I? Maybe 10, I think I got scouted by Norwich City. And uh, went through their training re- regime there. Um, then I went over to Arsenal for a year or two. Um, and then went to Ipswich Town for four years. And I didn't get a scholarship there. Uh, I, got, I got told I wasn't good enough to, to be a professional footballer there. So... That's so why I dropped down into sort of non-league and sort of worked my way up from there. Um, the, and the club that I went down to was Billericay. And so I was at Billericay for a year. And then I sort of, yeah, got scouted by Peterborough United. And that's where my uh, my first pro move come from. Yeah, you talk about, of course, dropping into non-league. Um, you yeah. see, a lot of, uh, see a lot of youngsters these days that could, could take that and hit them quite hard and end up falling... Out, out of love for the game, really. What what was it about yourself that thought? No, actually, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a go of this, and 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 went down to Billericay. Yeah, I think like when I was told that uh, it's just I wasn't gonna get a scholarship. Um, obviously, it was it was tough. It was hard to take. Um, but I kind of wanted to prove people wrong. Actually, that I was like I, I have got it what it takes uh, to sort of become a professional footballer. Um, and I, I can see some people going the other way and going, oh, they've told me I'm not good enough. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go and try something else. But that wasn't sort of like um, the kind of person I am. I didn't want to just give up on something just because someone said, no, you can't. Um, went away and work, worked harder. And I actually think going and playing non-league actually can benefit uh, players at a young age, um, getting to play against ad- adults and... Um, Learning that side of the game, being tougher, um, and I think I think it really really helped me, and obviously helped helped me progress to the career that I eventually had. Yeah, like you say, um, you play thirty seven games. Th- th- yeah, thirty seven games, scoring fourteen goals for Billericay. That propelled you in into the football league, signing yeah. for Peterborough in two thousand seven. Um, le- yeah, tell me how that how that move come about to Peterborough from Billericay. Um, yeah, so. I um, had yeah quite a good season a bit. I really enjoyed myself there. Doing somewhere else, which was back at the results, and I'm actually I've been playing against them um, recently. Obviously, I'm playing for Champs City now, and um, I've been playing against them, which is quite 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 weird going back going back there. But um, yeah, we had a we had a really good season. Actually, we got into the, the playoffs um, in the Ryman League. It was back then in the Ryman League. And we got not we lost the final. So my last game for them was in the playoff final against Bromley, and we lost them penalties, which was a which was a blow. Um, so it was sad to go out on that game with that defeat. Um, but yeah, I scored sort of 14 goals that year from right wing, and I had quite a bit of interest actually. But I think from South End, from Swansea, and Peterborough, and it was something about Peterborough that sort of um, caught my eye. They're quite an ambitious club with a, a new chairman. Darren McAntony and um, it sort of gave me a chance to go and move away from home as well at a young, young age and sort of like yeah a good a good life experience as well for me to sort of grow up so that's the reason why I chose chose Beesborough Was it you obviously mentioned uh, Darren McAntony and he's got quite a reputation from, from picking up um, footballers from non-league um, was that the kind of draw that he was taking that T- taking that ambition and that plunge for for for, for young players to, to develop, and you saw you saw Peterborough as a club that where you was going to develop. Yeah, exactly. They're, as I said, they're a very ambitious club, and you've had the likes of um, Aaron McLean, who um, comes from non-league, Craig McKell-Smith, George Boyd, um, 
all those kind of players they sort of took a gamble on and um yeah so it was it was um something like that that sort of led me to there and um i'm glad glad i made that choice yeah you obviously were were very successful there um uh, securing promotions um what was that like securing promotions at at, at league one level it's a bit of a whirlwind really it was like my first my first two seasons of professional football got back-to-back promotions <laughs> league two to league one league one to the championship yeah. so i was like oh this is easy <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it doesn't uh, it doesn't always happen like that but um no we had a we had a fantastic team a young ambitious hungry team um a lot of quality in there with a with a great manager as well. So um, when those things together, sort of, well, it was only guaranteed for one thing really. So um, and it was great, great learning curve for me. Um, I did actually start the first game of that season, which was um, I was quite surprised about. Uh, as obviously coming being new and coming into it, but um, now I was um, learned a lot in that first year, and then went on to play in League One as well. And it was just it was amazing to sort of start playing at bigger stadiums and. Uh, and sort of like in promotions, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, you, you talk about the the type of players that you played with at Peterborough and yeah. with the back, back, back to back promotions. Um, did you did you kind of? Uh, I know I know you obviously make a joke out of football life's easy, but um, did, did you kind of know with the with the characters around you that you, that Peterborough side were always going to be successful? Um, yeah, I, I really did actually. Yeah. Um... And another thing that I, I thought that really helped, and obviously people say about like team bonding and, and all that, and sort of being together, we all of us were really quite young and um, new to it all, and we all kind of lived like in kind of the same state, and we saw each other all the time. We'd be <laughs> training together, we'd go home, we'd go to each other's houses, and we'd cook for each other, and we'd spend so much time together. I think we had that real connection and that real bond, and I think that really, really did help with um, with our, our our success at Peterborough. Yeah, because because um, they say a lot now that dressing room, dressing rooms being successful is is how much you are together and and a dressing room being together and and teams that sometimes are not always successful are the ones that just kind of turn up to training and and keep themselves to self. Do you think that was instrumental you being? as successful as you was uh, I, I really do think that helped yeah definitely um, but then obviously um, at other teams I've, I've been at we've sort of people travelling from quite far and uh, they get their job done and they go home you don't really see it, everyone but um, yeah I definitely think that did help with the success that we had definitely yeah then you arrived at of course us uh, the Jills in 2010 initially on loan with with let's say your best mate Charlie Lee, <laughs> um, what what attracted you? How, well, firstly, yeah, how, how did the move come about for, from the Jills, um, and, and what attracted you to the club? Yeah, so at the time I, I was I was struggling with an ankle injury and I'd, I'd um, been out for a while, and then Dan Ferguson um, left the club, and uh, who was it coming? Um, Johnson, um, Gary Johnson, come in. And I was just coming back to injury. He said, I think you should go and get some minutes, get some games. Um, and Gillingham uh, were interested. So, yeah, that's when that's why I came out to Gillingham in the first place. And obviously it went off really well. really liked the place. He was actually closer to home. I'm from Essex. So it was, it was really close to sort of my family home as well. Um, so it just it just hit off really well. The change room there was like, I really enjoyed everyone's... Um, in the dressing room. Now, I know that sounds a bit silly, but yeah. to have that in a dressing room is actually quite important. And who, uh, who were the big characters during that time? So at that time, uh, Aki Femmel was there at, at, at that time. Um, who else was there? Um, Julian, the goalie. Yeah, Alan. Yeah, Alan Julian. Yeah, Alan Julian. yeah. yeah he, was, he was a great character. Andy Barcham. Yeah. Um, Conan McDonald. Yeah, exactly. So uh, all those kind of people. Um, and we were a bit gutted to go back actually after the four. Were there four games? Was it? Four games, four yep. Games. And well, yeah. you, we'd not won. For, we'd not won away for eighteen months when you turned up, and then you and Charlie rocked up, and we'd won two on the bounce. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, and, and we didn't really want to go, and the rest of the players were saying, "I'll oh, oh, please try and come back," but we we couldn't um, get that sorted. But um, 
eventually at the end of the season we managed to, to get that move and come back. Yes, you did. You 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 and you and Charlie secured permanent deals yeah. in the summer of two thousand and eleven. You both come back. It was it was like you, you were coming in as a package deal. Um, you 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 was it a case that was you going to come back? Because a, a lot of people said, "Oh, we, they weren't going to come together, or they w- without one they wouldn't come." Um, was it was it a case that you were going to come back? Um, uh, without Charlie, or was it a case that if Charlie was going to come back, you were going to come back? Ha- what was it? Um, I think it was um, sort of more individual. I think I think I might have actually signed just before. I'm not sure, um, but well, no, we definitely sort of have, we had discussions about it. And said, yeah. oh, that we were both really keen to go back there. Um, it was a, a good, good club, and we had a great time there. And that before the four games that we played. Um, yeah, so it was it was more of a, an individual thing. I think I think I actually signed before him. I think you did. <laughs> Yeah, he was being a bit. He was probably being a bit fussy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, probably his goal know. bonus when he never scored. Yeah, he probably didn't agree with yeah goal bonus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's a good good decision. I'm glad that I made that decision. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad you did too because you went on to make 104 starts for the Gill, scoring 20 goals. But obviously, your big, your big, um, your big into well, th- uh, movement at uh, uh, Gills was you. Winning that League Two title in in 2013 under Martin Allen, um, come on, tell us about that season. What was that like? Oh, it's one. Well, you can't really forget that that year coming out um, as champions of the of the league. Uh, yeah, that that was a, a great year. Um, I don't know where where to start. It's like <laughs> it was like saying stuff about that year. Start uh, right. Let, let's start at the start. Let's start right yeah. at the start of the season um, where. Um, we, we were unbeaten for 10 games, weren't we? We was, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think after that, it was quite funny. You know, we went into a meeting with, um, at, at, just before training with the gaffer, and he was saying, oh, he sat down. He was, like, it, to be fair, he was one of the, the funniest managers I've had, actually. He's like, most enjoyable. He never sort of knew what was going to happen in the <laughs> session because he was always up to something new and something crazy. Um I don't know how it'd be if you were in sort of relegation battle, but uh, <laughs> we, we were playing well, and it was it was brilliant. Um, but I remember this one uh, sort of meeting we had with him, and we had, I think we were on ten games on a bounce, and he come in and he just went, "Boys, if we can continue this form, we'll have a hundred and fifteen points <laughs> or something like that." He said, "That's a that's a record. We can do this. We can do it if we keep this form going." And uh, everyone sort of looked at each other and sort of laughed a little bit, but he was seeing the guy like the straight face. Of being he was deadly kid. serious, wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was quite a cool moment. I, hope so. I don't think we went and lost the next game, but um, no, that was uh, that was quite funny. Did that you, uh, of course, um, when when he when we started the season, um, he he come in. Um, he then brought obviously his own players in. Um, we've players that had ba- bags of experience looking at obviously Stuart Nelson's your Adam Barrett's um Danny, Danny Kedwell obviously come in um you you then go through the midfield obviously Charlie arrived um it was bad at bags of experience right through the team wasn't it obviously Joe Martin at full back then you then then you had Matt Fish um then you know Dion Burton that had been there and done it yeah. if you look at if you look at the, those type of players did you kind of know that we were on for a successful season? Um, yeah, with the with the experience that you have, you'd like to think that uh, you've got a good chance, especially with um, Adam Barrett as skipper as well. Like, yeah. he was the sort of he was the the rock of that team, mm-hmm. uh, just with his experience, his voice, and his know how of the game. Um, he read us, really led us on during that season. Um, but yeah, yeah, with that experience and the, and that little mix as well with. Yeah. With the young, young, hungry players um, that want to progress in the game, um, with Bradley back knocking on the door mm-hmm. um, during the season, um, players like that, you, you sort of know that you, yeah, you're onto a, onto a good thing. Yeah, you talk about Bradley Dack there. Did you? Obviously, he was knocking on the door at the, at the Gills at the time. Did you? Did you mm-hmm. kind of know that he was going to go on and do what he's done? Well, we we all knew he had something special. Yeah, he was always coming through from the youth team, scoring bundles of goals, and that's what he's known for. And um, 
he could he always found it like at the start he struggled to get that goal he had quite a few chances but once, yeah. he, had, once he did get one he just he had, he kept on coming um, but yeah we always knew we could see in training at, at a young age that he, he had something special and um, thankfully he's gone on to, to go and achieve bigger and better things yeah let's let's flip it towards the end of the season then um, wh- when did you kind of know that you were going to well you you were you were in that that category of you were you potentially had the chance of winning the league. When when did when did you feel as a squad that it, it hit home that it was it was it was there? Oh, do you know what? I, I I can't remember. I so I can't remember that one in particular point where we were like, you know what, we've got this. Um, I think it was was it Wimbledon at home that we. Yeah. You won the um, you won the league at Wimbledon at home. We secured league, we secured promotion against Torquay at home. That's the one. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I I think you don't know until it happens. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like um, you you don't want to sort of you don't want to jinx it at all. You, you don't want to get ahead of yourself. Of course. It's like that saying, "Take like game by game, like yeah. day by day," kind of thing. And I think that's um, what sort of puts you in good stead really like if you have that sort of mentality during the season not getting carried away I think that helps with um, your progression and going up the table so um, yeah I think I think it was that that talkie game at home that we um, finally got promotion but we weren't allowed to sort of re- well we did celebrate but we weren't <laughs> allowed to because we wanted to go and win the league the manager was saying look we don't we don't slack off now we want to go and win the league now and um, we had we had to carry on and do exactly what we were doing through the whole season and carry on. We weren't. It wasn't time to just celebrate. Um, we wanted to go and get that a, um, the gold medal. Any any funny stories from that year that you can say? <laughs> you can actually tell. <laughs> um, uh, there's uh, there's one at training. We uh, I say the stories with uh, with Martin Allen. Um, he, obviously, we used to tra- um, get changed at the ground and then drive down to the training ground. I used to cycle every single day and then he'd cycle down his helmet and his training gear and I think we started the session before he had actually arrived and he sort of trotted over on his bike which was in his helmet um, and then he sort of put his bike down and we were, I think we were doing like set plays or something about heading like certain headers and stuff and someone went up to do a header completely missed it and he went what are you doing? This is how you do it, and he had, still had his helmet on. Come into the middle, <laughs> someone's whipped the ball in, and he's just gone up for a header with his helmet on, and smashed the ball. And I, 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 I don't think it went in, but it was, it was so funny. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, one of those things. Think, Hilarious it happened. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, we talk about like that 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 year probably being well, certainly in certainly in my my lifetime being the best year. Um, of course, we then yeah we secure a promotion up to League One. Um, Martin unfortunately got got relieved of his duties in in, in the October, um, and it, it it never quite quite kind of hit the heights that we'd all wished it did in League One. What what, what do you think went not wrong, but didn't quite go our way that year after? Um, I don't know. Sometimes yeah, sometimes it can be tough um, going going up and sort of dealing with the the sort of the change in leagues. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think we recruited new players and um, we kept quite a big bunch of our, our existing squad as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 can't, I can't pinpoint exactly why it didn't work out in that year. Uh, I was a bit gutted in a way because of the success that we had the year before. Um but as a, as a football club, if, if you're sort of not getting the results and stuff and things aren't going your way, it's kind of, it's quite quick to have that turnaround these days and it's quite easy for them to just yeah. go, right, we need, we need to find something else and have them work out how to do it. But, um, yeah, of, yeah, I, 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 yeah, go on. Yeah, of course, um, it, it yeah, unfor- unfortunately f- for you, 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 th- you then, you then left the Jills and, uh, and went and signed for Stevenage. Um, yeah. in, in kind of in total, you had a, a mini spell in, in between that at, at Wimbledon. Um, but but in total, you you played roughly about ninety seven times for Stevenage. Um, between now, b- between when you left Gilles and uh, and now, um, what was it? What how did it come about? What was it about Stevenage that 
that attracted you to the to the club? Um, well, Steve Lynch, um, I had a sort of meeting with Graham Wesley actually, um, and I it's kind of had quite a lot of stories about like him being a very like hard working manager and put his players through his paces and this, this and the other. And um, I was just intrigued to see what he sort of had to say, really. And, yeah. um, and when I met him, I was like, this guy's like, like he, he like he talks really well, and he's quite. Um, you could sort of, I don't know, he's like he, he spoke a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, it sort of really attracted to sort of go and want to work for him. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I, I sort of obviously made that decision to do that. Um, and no, it was, it was um, yeah, it's a decision I've, I'm sort of glad that I did make. I learned quite a lot in that year playing under Graham Wesley. Uh, it was a tough, it was a tough regime that he, he yeah uh, he had. Um, but um, and actually, after the first season, I did struggle with a lot of groin injuries, which set me back quite a bit. I don't know if that was to do with any of the overload overloading sessions that we did um, with his training or not, but. Um, yeah, that set me back quite a bit, and that sort of carried on over over to Wimbledon as well. Yeah, and I wasn't able to sort of play as many games as I'd like to at, at Wimbledon. Yeah, we're obviously um, we'll, we'll talk about your current time now, and um, we'll finish off at your current time, your your, your current club. You, you're back home. You're back in Essex. Um, you, you're you're at Chelmsford. Um, yeah, how's that going? Tell us a little bit about that. You know what? The, the, the obviously, um, I sort of went into Chelmsford. I was, I was actually training with Crawley uh, in last last summer, it was, and uh, with Harry Kuehl. And um, I was playing quite a few games for them in the pre-season, and it was going really well. But then he said, uh, we got told that he had to get rid of a few players to get me in. And so he said, you might have to wait a bit of time. So um, I went and actually... So I was like, I wanted to play games. So I went and sort of joined Chelmsford. It was my like my closest team, really. I've been yeah. a rookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so when when I sort of played a few a few games there, and I, it was it was quite tough to take at the at the start. Uh, it's like going from full time to part time. Yeah. It was a transition where I wasn't quite ready for it at that time in my career. I don't think um, I still felt I had more to give in the league. Um, so at the start, it was quite hard to take, um, but I, know, I started to really enjoy it. I was, the, the, still the same buzz in the dressing room with the boys. Obviously, you don't see them as much because no. it's only part-time football, um, and and they're, they're a really well-run club as well. They tried to do it as professional as they could. Nick Haycock, who's um, assistant there, he's sort of been at West Ham, um, so he sort of knew how it's, he, he wanted to sort of make it as professional as, as he could and it was it was quite a good transition for me actually um, yeah I sort of did, did pretty well my first season I got over double figures um, scoring um, but yeah no, I'm yeah, really um, happy with how it's going at the moment yeah of course only recently there's been a change of manager in, in Robbie Simpson um, how how's he been um, and what's it like playing under him yeah so um, yeah that was a bit of a, a bit of a shock actually that we uh, had to change of manager because we, we were like 12 games unbeaten yeah at the time um, so it was a bit of a shock to the players but um, you know Timo's come in and, and done really well we, I, I sort of got a phone call the, after the next couple of days from him saying oh obviously I'm going to I'm sort of going to sort of take it over as interim for a, a little bit he said will you be able to help me so I was like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. It was me and um, Danny Spiller, uh, uh, Spiller um, Mickey Spillane, sorry, um, uh, there to help him with training and sort of getting um, team selection and things like that. So I sort of was there to help a little bit in that respect. So that was quite in, uh, interesting. Yeah, but are, are you are you planning to planning to go into coaching? Uh, I have done my a few coaching badges, but um, I, don't, I don't know at the moment. I don't know at the moment. I'm there. Uh, I am doing a little bit of coaching um, at the moment, but um, it's not something I've really, really sort of delved, delved into to sort of go down that route, but I'll keep my doors open. 
See yourself as a future manager or not? <laughs> no, de- definitely not a manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you kind of be the, the man and manager oh. arm round the player, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I'm definitely not. Um, yeah, I definitely don't want to be a manager. Not going to take a leaf out of Martin Allen's book, no? <laughs> assistant, assistant and be uh, a coach or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, perfect. Uh, go, on, go on, Chris, what are you going to say? Uh, no, 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 that's it, that's it. Um, yeah, perfect. That is a wrap for this um, special feature on the podcast. This is a new series that we, that we are bringing to you on the Jules Fancast. We've got a number of ex-players and coaches lined up um, coming your way. Um, thank you, Chris, for your time. Uh, thank you very much. It's great to be uh, involved. No problem. Um, as ever, thank you for listening as always. Um, and uh, keep supporting, keep liking, keep listening to us. Um, we appreciate your support in these, in these tough times. Um, and we'll bring you we'll bring you much more content. Thank you as ever.